Christian Broadcast Ministries presents CBM Worship. We invite you to worship with us as we praise and worship our Lord together through music, prayer, and God's Word. We bring you CBM Worship from the Sanctuary of the Wayside Temple, 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, Ohio. We pray you'll be blessed and encouraged as we worship our Lord together. Today I want to just take the time and speak on uh, the subject, God's Unspeakable Gift. And it's Christmas time, and we generally give attention to uh, the message uh, uh, contained in the Christmas history at least a couple times during the season. And uh, so today, we'll do our best on that subject. Those of you at home, have your Bible open to the book of St. Luke, chapter 1, as we will read that passage together today, or part of it, Luke chapter 1. Can we stand together as you're able today? I know, unfortunately... There's a fair amount of flu and cold bug going around, so we have some other folks that aren't feeling so good, and <clears throat> maybe some of you just got over a little bit of cold yourself, but we'll do the best we can. We're going to lift our voices to the Lord here in a moment. Listen to these words from Scripture just before we sing. The Bible says, God has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. And again, when he brings in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Let me tell you something. All of heaven was excited when Jesus was born. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life which came down from heaven. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If a man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. <laughs> Amen. Let's lift our voices as we worship. of great joy for every woman, every man. This will be a sign to you, a baby born in Bethlehem. Come and worship, do not be afraid. A company of angels peace among those on whom his favor rests. Come and worship, do not be afraid. My soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord. My soul, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great A child is born, unto us a son is given. Let every heart prepare his throne, let every nation under him come and worship. Do not be afraid. My soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord. My Magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great things for me. My soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord. My soul, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great things for me. With his righteousness, he shall reign on David's throne. His name shall be great from this day on. Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father. Wonderful Counselor, 
magnifies the Lord my soul, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great things for me. My soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord my soul, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great things. For me, my soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord, my soul, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great things for me.
Father, we're so thankful you sent your son into this world. And Lord, as we reflect upon the history, Lord, you've told us of that day, how it came about. Lord, you predicted it. You prophesied in your word, told us that Jesus would come. And in the fullness of time, you sent forth your son, made of a woman, born under the law. Sent him, sent him for our salvation. Praise your name. And Father, you said, call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Praise your name, Father. Lord, bless our congregation today. Bless those watching, listening. And I pray your spirit will just teach us again the glories of Christmas, the miracle, Lord, that's at the heart of this season. Help us to understand, perhaps someone seated here today, someone, Lord, in this service, someone watching, tuning in, they don't understand who the Lord Jesus is. Open their hearts today and help us, Father, as we share the glorious gospel of your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray that as we share that, you'll quicken it to the heart. Open blind eyes, Lord, unstop deaf ears, raise men out of death and into life. Lord, glorify the name of your son, Jesus, today. We worship you, Father, and we give you thanks for the gift of your son and for the gift of eternal life that he has provided for all those who believe upon him. Praise your sweet name. Now have your good way in this service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, before you're seated as you're able and as you might uh, desire, welcome someone near you with a good smile, perhaps a good handshake. It's good to see each one of you <clears throat> in the house of God today as you're, you know, we're just blessed to be here. And we thank God for giving us another opportunity. And uh, Sister Glennie, it's good to see you this morning, sis. We've been in our thoughts and prayers a lot. And uh, Glennie's dear brother Joe, whom we worshiped with a lot some years ago, he went home, be with the Lord. And uh, you lift up Glennie and her family. She's had several family members graduate in this recent uh, few weeks, hasn't it, uh, sis? It's been just a few weeks. Five weeks, yeah. But uh, we're all traveling towards home ourselves, are we not? Hey, I know where I'm going. Do you know where you're going today? Dad, do you know where you're headed today? Hey, Amen. We're traveling towards home. Some of our brothers and sisters are crossing the finish line just before we do, but we're right behind them. Am I saying it right? Brad, am I saying it right? We're just a little bit behind, but we're all going to meet at the feet of Jesus one day. That is, if you know him, and you can, aren't you glad Christ came for all men? That's right, the Lord Jesus, he came for all men and women, boys and girls. And today, listen well, and let the Spirit of God draw you to himself. Well, just a few things in the way of announcements, and we'll move along today. First of all, we're pleased to have a baptism in our service today, and uh, glad to help our dear brother follow the Lord and Believer's Baptism, and we rejoice about that, and any others that might be ready. Um, also, I want you to remember the Erie County Right to Life annual ad. I think the information's out there in the lobby. You can sign up uh, if you'd like your name to appear in the annual ad. It's a public testimony to our community that there's a lot of folks that are pro-life, stand for the sanctity of human life. And uh, that's an issue that's ongoing. It hasn't been resolved. We're certainly thankful for the ruling of the Supreme Court this year. I'm sorry that that's sad in the heart of many, many people, but a lot of us have been praying that that would turn. And at least the issue is back in the hands of the states. And uh, that's where it ought to be, closer to home where people can decide. And so... The need for education and ministry uh, continues, and this is one way you can let your voice be known. Uh, you don't have to make a donation. You can still fill out the front part of the envelope 
and the way you want your name to appear in the ad, and they will honor that. If you feel inclined to help uh, with the cost of the ad, you can do that as well. Uh, also, <clears throat> remember our call to prayer on Sunday evening. We're praying for America. Now, I want to say just a brief word of encouragement here. Look, we're not praying for America because we think one season of prayer is going to solve every issue that our country faces. No, we got to stand in this battle for an extended period of time. Now, I'm serious. We have to stand in the gap. We've got to pray. There's just one thing on my mind. Now, you folks pray as the Lord helps you pray. There's just one thing on my mind. I'm asking the Lord to preserve our religious freedom. And if the Lord is gracious to preserve our religious freedom, the others will follow. But if the cornerstone of our republic is destroyed, which is namely religious freedom, if that's ever gone, then the nation we once knew is over. And uh, so you pray. We're praying diligently and seeking the Lord. Another reason we're going to continue to pray. I really believe, I've been hearing other pastors and Bible teachers uh, say the same. It's just something that's real in my heart. I, I don't know how to explain it any other. I don't know anything in particular about 2023. I just sense and believe that 2023 is going to be a year of unusual stress upon the nations. And I think that's going to happen for a variety of reasons. We must be in prayer. If you're not a praying Christian, you're not going to be ready for the things you have to walk through. And uh, even with the blessing of religious freedom, there's going to be much trial, difficulty. We're in a great struggle, and the Lord knows all about it. But uh, just gear up if the Lord tarries. And uh, the way things are shaping up, we believe we are racing towards the return of Christ. But should the Lord tarry, we need to be ready. So let's keep praying. Uh, over the years, as you know, Christmas falls occasionally on Sunday. And we always have our regular Sunday morning service. We haven't had a Sunday night for some time. So uh, that uh, will still be the case. But uh, look forward to that service. It will be our annual Christmas candlelight service. You'll enjoy all the music, the worship, as we reflect upon the birth of the most important person in history. Period. Oh, man. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Let me put this down. All right, right there it is. Amen. All right, we're ready to worship in our tithe and offering as we leave here. And as you've grown in this grace, find great joy in it. That's my hope and prayer. Uh, let's continue to worship as our team leads us. Amen. And darkness run and hide at a baby's cry, at a baby's cry. Songs of angels fill the sky, break the silent night, break the silent night.
Amen. Ah, these are sweet songs. You know, I can't speak for you, but I enjoy uh, the Christmas hymns, and I enjoy uh, most all of the new Christmas songs that are written. Uh, I think Mark Lowry wrote a great one, what, about 20 years ago or so. Mary, did you know? Uh, some of these songs just live on. There's a lot of creativity amongst God's people, a lot of new songs that you might hear on Christian radio uh, that uh, deserve a little more hearing, I might add. Some of them are just happy tunes that uh, might be more fitting for radio. But I'll tell you something. You need some songs that will lift your spirit. Now, now you can't be singing songs like I'm going to have a blue Christmas without you and have a happy, joyous Christmas. You can't do it. And I'm not uh, making light of the fact that uh, sometimes things happen that might uh, hurt our heart. That's that's not my point. But you understand exactly what I'm saying, don't you? If you fill your mind with songs that, about the Lord that exalt Christ and and what happened uh, when Christ came into this world, uh, it will thrill your soul. Now, <clears throat> as you can see here, I have this nice little red uh, uh, fella in my hand here. Uh, I hate to put a plug in for a company, but this is this is what's called a breezer. And it's not really a cough drop, but it's really great for throat irritations. Now, I know from uh, practice and from using these for a few years, my doctor put me onto these and they are very, very helpful. As you notice, my throat's doing pretty good at the moment. But now when I preach and I get going, use my voice continually, then it'll start having a little trouble because you're putting a strain on it. Now, I'll put this little fella in my mouth and I have 20 minutes. So, Brian, I'm good for 20 minutes. <laughs> Amen. Open your Bible, Luke chapter 1. All right. Luke chapter 1. <clears throat> Got my water ready, too, so we're going to survive. All right, Luke chapter 1. I'd like to begin down at verse 26, read down through verse 38 here in a moment. Today, I'm sharing some thoughts directly from the text of my book, God's Unspeakable Gift. And I want you to listen closely. I want you to listen to this teaching. There's teaching here. There's wonderful, glorious thoughts here. And I want you to listen closely, and I want you to remember this. The miracle of Christmas occurred at the moment of the incarnation of Christ in the womb of Mary. Through the miracle in which Mary was found with child of the Holy Ghost, God took to himself human nature. Now, <clears throat> if there's anything that settles the issue for Christians as to when life begins, this is it. Because at the moment of the conception, the word was made flesh. Life began in the womb of Mary at the moment of conception. Of course, that's true for all human beings, but you see the point. Jesus wasn't the Son of God when Mary's water broke and she gave birth, which was a very natural process. But the miracle occurred when she was found with child of the Holy Ghost, when that conception took place through the miracle working power of God, the Holy Spirit, the Word took to himself human nature. Let's look at... Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And of course, thus Jesus is the Son of God. And this title, Son of God, you should know this well as believers today, but the title Son of God is a title of deity. We believe Jesus Christ is God incarnate, that he is equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ is truly God and truly man in one person. Let's begin to read about it here. Luke chapter 1. <clears throat> verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. 
And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now let's pray for a moment. Father, we thank you for your precious word. Lord, how real this is today. I pray, Father, that you will quicken this truth to every heart and help us to understand that you sent your son into this world for our salvation. Help us, Lord, to make room for him in our hearts. Lord, draw us to the Savior today. It's in his name we ask and pray. Amen. <clears throat> Long ago, the prophets foretold the birth of a unique person. Two of these important prophecies appear in the book of Isaiah. They're familiar to us. The prophet declares, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Believe me, that's a sign. It's no sign for a young woman to give birth. If you have, if you have any translation of the Bible that renders uh, Isaiah 7, 14 as young woman instead of virgin, uh, you need to get rid of that one. OK, uh, a virgin shall conceive and uh, bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. By the way, that remains a sign to the whole world today. Again, Isaiah proclaims, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, just stop and let the word speak. If his name's called the Mighty God, then he's not just a mere man, this is Emmanuel. This is God with us. Praise the Lord. This is who Jesus is. He's son of God, the divine son, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. While Isaiah foretold the birth of a special child, the prophet Micah boldly predicted the very place of this child's birth. Both Micah and Isaiah, they were contemporaries, roughly 700 years or so before the birth of Christ. And so Micah predicts the very place of the child's birth. In chapter five of his prophecy, uh, we find these familiar words. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. These two prophets clearly foretold the birth of a one-of-a-kind child conceived without the agency of a human father. As well, note carefully, Micah says the child is from everlasting. But how could a child conceived in the womb be without beginning? Isaiah's prophecy gives us a very clear answer to this question. He says the child is to be called Emmanuel. This name literally means, as you know, God with us. The New Testament expands upon this great truth in the first chapter of John's gospel. Now, if you're staying with me, say amen. amen. All right, now listen close to the New Testament as it expounds upon these prophecies. Uh, John's gospel says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word was made flesh. That is, the word took to himself human nature and dwelt among us. He came and tabernacled amongst us. 
And John said, <clears throat> we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The child spoken of by the prophets is without beginning or from everlasting because he is God, the word incarnate. This child is truly God and truly man in one person. But how can this be? How can this be? In our text, the Virgin Mary had a similar question. Startled by the announcement of the angel that she would soon give birth to this special child, Mary humbly asked, how shall this be, saying, I know not a man? The angel Gabriel proceeded to explain to Mary that the Holy Spirit would miraculously enable her to conceive and give birth to the Son of God. Thus, the long-awaited seed of the woman was sent into the world when Mary conceived and was found with child of the Holy Spirit. It is the mystery of this miracle that clothed God with a human nature. As mentioned, John's gospel reveals the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Furthermore, John proceeds to repeatedly state in his gospel that the father sent the son into the world. For example, Jesus states in John 6, 38, for I came down from heaven. Amen. I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Again, we read in John 17, 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The point is this, the eternal word, uh, another title would be the eternally begotten Son of God. He was sent to accomplish his Father's will. The Son came down from heaven. The virgin conception clothed him with a human nature. While he remained intrinsically God as a member of the triune Godhead, the incarnation veiled the glory he had with the Father before the world began. John 17, 5. Elsewhere, Scripture teaches it pleased the Father that in him, Jesus, should all the fullness of the Godhead dwell in bodily form. The book of Colossians states, it pleased the Father that in him, Jesus, the Christ, should all fullness dwell. For in him, Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Again, it pleased the Father that in the person of Jesus the Christ, all the fullness of the divine nature should dwell in bodily form. Try to understand it. You know, I've read this many times. We've preached it for many years. It's the cornerstone of our faith. The deity of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith. Listen, it took uh, God had to be in Christ in order to reconcile the world to himself. No mere man can be our savior. It was the divine son of God who provided salvation for us. And so we think about it often. We study about it often. We try to preach it to the best of our ability. It's this miracle, the miracle of the virgin conception. It clothed the eternal word with a human nature. In the person of Jesus, the Messiah, the second distinct personality of the great triune God of eternity came and dwelt among us. Can I just interject quickly? And I'm not going to dwell here, but I absolutely believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God, the Holy Ghost. Uh, we are Trinitarian because that's what the Bible reveals concerning the nature of the one true God. The one true God eternally exists as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The one true God possesses a triune nature. And if you are willing to deny that, you will ultimately deny the deity of Jesus Christ. And I have to tell you, my friend, while you don't have to be a theologian to be saved, you do have to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. If you're not willing to confess him as Lord, you're going to be lost. Jesus said it to his own people. He said, if you don't believe that I am, you're going to die in your sins. All right, I'll keep moving. If you're still with me, say amen. All right. Now, as you come to the Christmas season, and I love it. I like to reflect upon the birth of my Lord. We ultimately, we got to look in that Bethlehem manger again. I guess there's been uh, many thousands of renditions of the nativity. And we wouldn't know exactly <clears throat> what it looks like. But we can, through the witness of the word, 
we can look into that Bethlehem manger. And when you look into that Bethlehem manger, you'll see a helpless little baby. A babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Little fingers, little toes. I'm sure Joseph and Mary counted them all, make sure there was 10 toes, 10 fingers. Perfect, sweet baby boy. Helpless child wrapped in swaddling clothes. That little child was heaven's child. Although God from eternity past, he humbled himself. Now stay with me. He humbled himself. He made himself of no reputation, the Bible says. The Bible says he took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, Philippians 2, 7. But why? Why did our creator humble himself in this way? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, he was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. This passage in Hebrews goes on to say, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death, listen, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. At the beginning of history in the garden, God promised Adam and Eve the seed of the woman, listen, would bruise the head of the serpent, Genesis 3.15. However, in the process of doing so, he would suffer a heel wound. This language speaks of the death of Christ. God sent his only begotten son into the world to free mankind from the power of death and bring the promise of eternal life. However, to do so required his death as a sacrifice for the sin of the world. Thus, he took upon himself human nature to die as the great sacrifice for our sin. It's so appropriate to say that Jesus was born in the shadow of the cross. He was destined for Calvary. And I want you to think about this for a moment. The Son of God stepped down from his throne, as it were, and he came with a passion to free you and me and this world from bondage to sin and death. Can you hear that today? Jesus Christ left heaven, left the glory that he shared with the Father and allowed, it, allowed all that glory to be veiled by a human nature in this unique person, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He came and so humbled himself, stepped down from his throne with a passion to free you from bondage to sin and death. It's important to recognize that Jesus knew the Father prepared him a body to be offered in sacrifice for sin. You can find this in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 14. Now, let me make this statement again. Jesus knew the Father prepared him a body to be offered in sacrifice for sin. This means Jesus understood his great sacrifice was necessary to satisfy the divine wrath against sin. He understood this. He fully understood his death on our behalf was necessary to reconcile us to God. Consequently, now listen, the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, speaking of Christ, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. There was no joy in the cross. He endured the cross. But with joy, he looked beyond the cross, knowing that his sacrifice would purchase freedom for a world held in bondage to sin and death. Thus moved by a passionate desire to save us from our sins, he took upon himself human nature for the suffering of death, our Savior's passion for us did not begin at the cross. Rather, it began as he lay in a Bethlehem manger. Praise his name. He came for us. He came for us. Praise his name. 
No, he left heaven with a passion and it ultimately manifested at the cross when there by the grace of God, he tasted death for every man. Praise his name. You know, when you think about the Savior's deep desire to deliver us, to deliver his own from the power of Satan, the message of the angel to the shepherds that holy night should fill our hearts with overflowing joy. The angel said, for unto you, for unto you, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, unto you. What a gift God has given to us in the person of his son. Each Christmas season affords a fresh opportunity to journey back to Bethlehem to see this thing that has come to pass. And I say we ought to gaze again upon that little babe and let the thrill of it all, the awesome reality of what has happened here, let us gaze upon the unspeakable indescribable, precious gift of God, his only begotten son. He is the miracle of Christmas and he came just for you. I say, praise you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. You know, if you ever understand that Christ loves you, you <laughs> you're one step from being converted. When you understand that Christ loved you and gave himself for you, when you understand that Christ went to the cross for you, isn't that what we all came to understand on our way to faith in Jesus? We understood that Christ died for us, that there at the cross he bore our sins in his body on the tree, and there he bore our sin and guilt. There he satisfied God's just and holy wrath against all of our guilt and sin. There, he purchased our salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his name. When you understand that Christ gave himself away because he loves you, that's the power of the gospel. You know, I'm not ashamed to say today that I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not ashamed to say that I follow him. You say, well, what about so-and-so? So-and-so didn't die for me. You say, well, what about this one over here? But that one, that one didn't die for me either. What about that one over there? That one over there, his dusty bones are still in the grave. No, my Savior died for me and on the third morning rose from the dead for me. And because he lives, I shall live also. No, sir. There's something awesome about Christmas. There's a certain glory about it. God came near to us in the person of his son. My friend, if you want to know the living God, all you got to do is study his son. You want to see God in all of his glory and see God in all. Let, let, let Jesus reveal God. You can't know the true and living God apart from his son. Christ has fully revealed God to mankind. If you'll come to him today, he'll save you just like he saved me. Praise the Lord. Well, this Christmas season, I hope you'll worship him. I hope you'll share him with others. And I hope you'll open your heart to Christ. You know, one of the pictures in the Christmas history that is often portrayed in children's programs is when Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem and there was no room in the inn. It was a busy season, you know. All the world was moving about because they had to go register for taxes, and you know the history. Mary and Joseph got there, and there was no room for them in the inn. And so they found their way to what amounted to a barn of sorts, whether it was in uh, something carved out of a side of a hill, a cave, whatever it might have been. It was a barn, it was a place for animals, and there was a feeding trough there that we call a manger. And Christ was born there. But you know, that little part of the history it really speaks in a personal way to us. Do you have any room for him today? Do 
Do you have any room for him? This world doesn't seem to have much room for our Savior. But the Holy Spirit comes and teaches you Christ. and The Lord draws you to himself and you are compelled to open your heart's door and make room for the Savior. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask our team to come and we're going to sing in a moment. Let them prepare. And uh, I'll give a brief invitation here in a moment. Do you have room for the Lord Jesus? He is God's unspeakable, indescribable gift. And uh, I hope that you know him today. I hope everybody in this building is already saved. But you know what? If you don't know the Lord today, you're in the right place. And the Lord has brought you to this place today that you might make a decision for Christ. Let's stand together for a moment, shall we? And uh, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for another season where we can reflect upon the fulfillment of so much scripture and we can think upon your first coming and all that that means to us. You so love the world, Father, that you gave us your only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Father, draw men and women to Christ, even in this moment of invitation, we pray. Heads are bowed. We're praying for just a moment today. What about you? Have you given your heart to Christ? Have you made room for the Savior? This is real. It's very personal, isn't it? The Lord Jesus died for you. He calls us individually, personally. Do you know that? His calls to the world, but that, that's on a very personal level. He speaks to our heart. Christ is calling you to himself today. It's time for a decision. The Bible promises that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's real. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't keep that door closed. Open that door and let Christ come in. It's time for a decision. While we're praying, if there's anyone in this building, young or old, and you say, Brother Russ, I need to make my decision for Christ. I need to receive him today. While we're praying, and God's people, they are of serious mind. They're praying right now. And if there's anyone in this building that needs to give, you need to give your heart to Christ. If that's you, then I want you to slip out of your seat right now and come join me at this place of prayer. How precious this is. You know, God gave us the gift of his son. But a gift has to be received. Isn't it sad, church, that so many would neglect to receive the gift of eternal life? My friend, what about you? Isn't it time to receive Christ and to receive the gift of eternal life? It's time. While we're praying, is there anyone that needs to come? Just slip from your seat and come pray with me. Let's do that. Let's do that today. Oh, I tell you, I say it all the time, but I mean it. I don't tire of giving invitations. These are precious moments. If you're here without Christ, you're making a decision. Whether you come and pray or not, you're still making a decision. How about you make that decision for Christ? Don't walk away from him today. Is there anyone that needs to come pray? Feel welcome. Praise the Lord. God is good to us, folks. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad I know the Savior. How about you? If you know him, give me an amen. amen. Yes, we do. If you love him, give me another amen. amen. Yes, we do love him. Praise the Lord. We oh, holy night.
night The stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till He appeared and the soul felt its worth For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, Christ was born. O oh, night divine, O oh, night, O oh, night divine. Truly He taught us to love one another. His gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name christ is the lord oh praise his name forever his power shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing It has been a blessing for us to worship together at this time, and we invite you to come worship with us. CBM is located 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, easily accessible from State Route 2. Take Route 2 to State Route 101 South and turn left onto Maple Avenue. 
We would love to have you visit. And don't forget, it's your prayers and gifts of love that bring this program into your home each week. Send your gifts of support, prayer requests, and comments to CBM, Box 247, Castalia, Ohio, 44824. CBM Worship is a production and presentation of Christian Broadcasting Ministries. CBM, proclaiming the word.